Lift up your hands and ascend. Lift up your hands and ascend. Even as the channels of our hearts, the channels of our souls, the channel of our spirit will be opened up. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Oh. Passa bana bana kande boshe bana disa tele branda kausa mini kim branda usa limana na no zele bande ki para boshe mana kande kasi ni kando us rebanda zibi ni ki mande kapa rabona satani ana no no shabala kaza thank you precious holy ghost for you are helping us thank you precious holy ghost for you are breathing upon our hearts. You are helping us to become better people. You are helping us to become and to form into the image of your dear son. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, we bless you. We ask that you breathe upon us this morning. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Holy Ghost fire, breathe on me, yesterday's gone, today I'm in need, Holy Ghost fire, breathe on me. to say thank you 
thank you for this is the day that you have made lord we rejoice and we are glad in it father we pray oh god that you will breathe upon our hearts we pray oh god that you will translate us into the image of your dear son we ask oh god that we would become all that you have provided for us all that you have provisioned for us to become in the name of jesus help us to be changed people help us to become better people thank you gracious father in jesus name i pray amen shall we go ahead and celebrate jesus go ahead and celebrate jesus hallelujah amen amen even before we take our seats can you join me to celebrate my pastor let us all rise to our feet let's all rise to our feet please let's celebrate my pastor let's celebrate our pastor the set man of the commission that the lord is using for us we pray that the lord will embrace him in the name of jesus and the ministry will continually prosper in his hands in jesus name join me to celebrate the pastorate celebrate every member of the macro team that has come forth in first and second service and celebrate yourselves even as you take your seats in god's presence hallelujah praise god welcome the person to your left and to your right so then welcome to church welcome to church it's the best place to be hallelujah on thursday we started the teaching yes it's marco week it's marriage week we started the teaching on thursday and we're made to understand that our marriage can be likened to a garden and not just any garden but the garden of treasure that is in your marriage lies beautiful things that god has in store for you in your marriage lies so much blessings that mouths can say if only we can align to the instructions of god and then we saw two key instructions that god gave to us on thursday one is that husbands should love their wives and the second is that wives should submit to their husbands and then this morning in the first service a speaker said to us that there are things we need to do to make our relationship work and then she brought us to the understanding of the different types of love and then the key thing that i took is that there is another there is a priority in order to have your relationship your marriage work and then when we're reading the scripture the other time we're made to understand that our god is a god of order and to everything there is an order you know last week apostle started the teaching on order and he told us that even in the church of god there is order so even in your life there should be order so we're made to understand that the other in our relationship the first should be spirituality so when you are looking out for a life partner the first thing you need to look out for is spirituality and she emphasized on the fact that activity is not spirituality that you see someone coming to church speaking the loudest tongue and praying in the loudest language or in the voice is not a sign of spirituality it takes the eyes of the spirit discernment to really know a spiritual person and a spiritual person is someone whose life will reflect christ so if the life of a person is reflecting the gifts more than the fruits there is a need to check that life because god is more concerned about our fruits that is what shows to us that we are renewed on a daily basis hallelujah that the word of god is renewing our hearts when we are when we are um, we, we, we we persevere we love others yes when we are patient and all that the fruits of the spirit so she told us that the first thing is spirituality when you are looking out for a life partner you need to be sure that the person is a spiritual person then number two she said then you come to the part of compatibility health wise um character can you complement one another and then the third one you go to the one that you used to place first which is the physical appearance the physical connectivity you know you hear some people saying you know first for even seeing the person at first sight i don't even feel connected i'm not even attracted to the person how can i marry someone that i'm not attracted to that attraction cannot sustain marriage we are not saying it should not be part of it but we are saying that it should not be the topmost priority god is giving us wisdom in jesus name yes and there's someone who wonder that why are they even teaching us all these things we're already married what's our own business with them um, when you're choosing a life partner you are married but you have children you are married but you have sisters you are married but you have brothers you have those that come up to you in the community as big auntie big sister 
big brother for counsel so god is bringing all of this knowledge our way so that we'll be able to bring other people to the light of god's word so there is no knowledge that is wasted tell your neighbor no knowledge is a waste so don't let us be casual don't let us be passive in the presence of god that this one they are saying does not concern me it does it concerns you so much it concerns you so much all of us we have been called by god whether you know it or not we are all called by god he saved us so we can save others so when 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 teachings are going on whether is what you are going through now or whether is what you have gone through in the past so please always be active in the presence of god and ensure that your heart is blessed and then coming to the second service we looked at finance in marriage why am i taking this route why am i going back it's for the sake of those that are just joining the service so we can have an understanding of what we are doing yes we've dealt about finance in marriage which is always most times the, the the problem in homes we have talked about that at length so if you need it you can pick it up at the media decks the video is there so that you can see how the the speaker was gesticulating his emotions and everything and the audio is also available so i want to beseech everybody even for those of us that are here let's still go back and listen faith coming by hearing by hearing the word of god you can become a media evangelist all of these beautiful teachings that god is is dishing out to us let's send it out let's share with others it's not only bad news that you should share it's not only evil news that you should share you are the first person to forward it on on facebook on whatsapp they say you should close your door very well low shut your window where you are walking watch the floor they say your children should not open their mouths like this how about teachings where god is teaching about our homes how about teachings where god is teaching us about revival how many times do we share them don't be a sharer of bad news share be a sharer of good news that's what we need to hear stop telling us about the bad ones stop telling us about the negative ones tell us about the good ones that will stir up our faith god is helping us in jesus name amen so we'll continue in this light and we trust god to help us in jesus name yes what does god have to say about marriage why are we talking about marriage marriage marriage, marriage? The, the, the reason we are talking about marriage is that god is so interested in your marriage God is so interested in your home because if your home is not balanced, every aspect of your life cannot be balanced. That's the truth. Evangelist Sunday said something when he was teaching. He said that um, the family units contributes to the church finance. So when he was talking about finance, he said um, our finance is part of what we use to run the church. Now imagine husband and wife that does not agree. How can they give to church? How can they give wholeheartedly to the church? That means the wife will probably have to dodge to give and the husband will not even give at all because the wife knows that the moment the husband knows that she's giving to the church he will tell her she's a fool and everything and she wants to give so we should agree in all areas of our lives like i said on thursday if you are a wife and your husband is not here pick the message from the media tedx play it loudly in the house are you disturbing them no are you passing the message no you're just listening to someone but god is doing something upon his heart and if you are husband though your wife is not here pick the and also do the same thing the holy spirit is everywhere right and he can do all things yes marriage is good tell your neighbor marriage is good marriage is good though marriage is good marriage is good yes like apostle would always tell us that our condition is not our conclusion no it is what the word of god says about you that should be your reality that should be your truth presently you might look poor but is that what the word of god is saying about you so until you accept it it will not become until you see it it won't happen so if you have accepted that you are poor everything around your life will speak poverty so if you have accepted the ideas of men, the ideologies of men, the experience of mothers and fathers of old, telling you that, whoa, you just have to endure just for it, see, and you too, you agree to for it, see, is everything that will be happening around your life will be endurance, endurance, endurance. But when you come to search, what does the word of God say about my marriage? 
then you would see those things coming to place. You see it happening. So I've come to tell you this morning, in case you have forgotten, that marriage is good. Marriage is good. And marriage is to be enjoyed. Marriage is meant to be enjoyed, not to be endured. It's not meant to be endured. It's meant to be enjoyed. Are we saying that marriage would always be a bed of roses? No. Are we saying there won't be ups and downs? No. There would be. There will be ups. There will be downs. There will be dark times. But what makes it enjoyable is the fact that we are in oneness. That we are united. We are on the same page. So we will be able to walk through whatever comes our way together. And that's why the first prerequisite for everyone that wants to get married is to get married to a like-minded person. Get married to someone who thinks like you. So if you are a born again, like born again Christian, a child of God, you should get married to a child of God. It is easier that way. Marriage is good. Marriage is to be enjoyed. Marriage is to be enjoyed. Regardless of whatever ascension that man has made, regardless of man's philosophy, God's word says that marriage is to be enjoyed. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 the word of god cannot be broken the scripture cannot be broken you cannot add you cannot subtract the word of god is infallible does not break genesis 1 31 and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good it was very good god had created man at this point man had been created and the scripture says that he made them male and female so in the male the female already existed so it was not as if after god has said this that's when he now thought that oh let me start working towards making the female so for the male and the female in the house when you were made when god ordained and instituted marriage he said already that it is good and not just good very good very good hallelujah very good god instituted marriage and he said that it is good so our god is good so anything that should come out from god will be good because god is good so when we say god is love whatever comes out from god would always be what so when we claim that we are children of god one evidence that truly we are children of god is our love life your love life is not only the boyfriend girlfriend my wife my husband that you do no my fiance my fiance no love the way god would love agape unconditional love love that does not have any attachments you are not loving the person based on the goodness of the person we said to the husband that they should love their wives despite their flaws you just love her you are not loving her because she's good you are not loving her because she's the best you are loving her because that is the commandment and because you have the nature of god in you so god is good and everything that would proceed out of god would definitely be good so if it is god choosing your partner for you then your partner is good hallelujah then your partner is good God is helping us in Jesus' name. The sad thing is that most of us, we believe the ideas of men than we believe the ideas of God. And that's why I said, be a sharer of good news. Stop sharing bad news. Stop sharing bad experiences. That was how my auntie, she did everything. She sacrificed all that she had for the man. At the end of the day, the man left out. A man that we cheat, we cheat. And then we also will believe that well, there's nothing you want to do. A man that will cheat, will cheat. Whose philosophy is that? Where have you read? Where have you read? So, we, we need to check all those knowledge we used to have, all those um, things, all those experiences we think that we have garnered. What is the source? Is it God or man? Amen. Many people believe the ideas of men more than the word of God. And it is a spiritual law that what you believe affects what you experience. What you believe affects what you experience. It shall be unto you according to your faith. 
So if you believe that every man will cheat, definitely everything that would happen around you will be in that light because that is what you believe in. Um, consciously or unconsciously, it will happen. If you believe that in our today, woman does not take responsibility, it's the woman that will do everything, do everything. If you know you are tired of doing everything, pray for your husband to start doing everything. You know the load is too much. Instead of complaining, instead of telling us, instead of telling everybody that cares to listen, that the load is too much. Yes, you know, we know the load is too much. Stop talking about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to God in prayer. God, this is not the order at the beginning. We are meant to understand that our husbands are the head and they should be the sole provider. And then we compliment and support them. So you should go to God. In the place of prayer, God, my husband is meant to be providing for the family. I'm only supporter. I'm to support him. That has not been happening. Lord, change the narrative. Whether he has it and is not giving you, you just go to God in prayer. Prayer works. Tell your neighbor, prayer works. Pray about everything. Pray about everything and anything. Amen. Um, Pastor Mrs. Oluagunna that was with us last week, she shared a story. She said that she prays about anything, and when she was teaching, she kept emphasizing on praise and prayer that it works. She said there was a time in her life when she needed friends. She just used to be on her own, but she felt that need that she need people, iron sharpened, iron those that she can talk to that they will bear her up in the place of prayer that will give her moral counsel and everything. And she said she knew she could not choose by sight. She started praying about friends. It might sound funny, but that is the level of relationship God wants us to have with him. So far, we can go to our earthly parents to ask them for biscuits, ask them for sweets. Then you can ask your father for anything. He's our father. Let's talk to him. God changes the narrative. My husband is meant to be this, but that's not the version of him that I'm seeing. Lord, I want to see your own version of husband. I want to see your own version of wife. I want to see your own version of children. And then you see him hearing your prayer. As long as you are patient and you have faith. Not that you pray today and tomorrow you expect your, your spouse to just... God is not a magician. He will take people through process so that they will be able to sustain it. When it takes us through process, we are able to sustain it. We will not fall back again. We will not be able to go back because we understand how we came to that point. But you know, a magician can just close his eyes and open and then rain start falling. I'd be like, oh, once I go to him, just open and close. You don't even understand how the rain came. You don't even understand the effort of that person. But when God takes us through process, we value whatever the result is. I pray that grace is given unto us in Jesus' name. Amen marriage is good marriage is honorable in all if something is evil it cannot be honorable so if marriage were to be evil god would not tell us in hebrews 13 4 that marriage is honorable he's telling us that it is honorable because it is good and james 1 17 make us understand that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comments down from the father of light with whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning god is helping us in jesus name god is helping us in jesus name why do we keep talking about marriage why do we keep emphasizing on the need for us to live our homes according to the intents of god it is because your marriage is relevant to the church so i'm speaking on the relevance of marriage to the church the relevance of marriage to the church why 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 did the church come up with the macro team why did the church have different seminars and all that on marriages it is because your marriage is important is relevant to the church if you are not happy in your marriage probably you and your husband you fought with yourself and you are you are our music director H.O. the choir, and you are to lead people. What kind of atmosphere would you give into the church? What kind of ambience will you bring people into? Amen. That is why we need to have a correct life. You are ushering people. Where are you ushering them into? This thing is spiritual. It's an atmosphere 
whatever you are feeling if fear is not taken someone else will enter into it so if, if the person beside you is laughing now even if you don't want to laugh because laugh is contagious you will laugh you will just laugh. You will find yourself laughing. If you sit down with someone that is so moody in the church, before you know it, what will happen? You also become moody. You will just try to understand what is happening to me. If you sit down beside someone that is dozing in the church, what will happen? To, to just transmit. And then you start wondering, but I didn't eat ever. But I didn't eat anything before coming to church. But I slept well at night. Why am I feeling sleepy here in the church? It's because there is an atmosphere. I pray for you this morning that every wrong atmosphere around your life disappears in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Atmosphere, ambience is very important. So we want people to come to church and their hearts are so open that they can receive from God. They go back, they are blessed. Not that you come to church. You know, you've had it just with your, your husband at home or your wife at home and you just try to patch it up and package and then you come to church. The truth of the matter is that if 100 things were said, if five should enter, it's grace. Am I lying? It's a fact. You would just try to smile. The smile is fake. That's why I would always tell people, look beyond the smile. Try to understand if that smile is genuine or not. Amen. You can't receive. You can't receive freely. Because the scripture says that was with, with what? With joy. With joy. With joy. We draw from the well of salvation. So if you are not joyful, where are you drawing from? What are you drawing? That's why your marriage is important. That is why your marriage is important. It is so, it's so huge in the heart of God. It's a very core issue in the heart of God. The ma your marriage and the church are interwoven. They are inseparable. You can't separate the church from your marriage. You can't separate your marriage from the church. Now, I'm not talking about the church interfering in your marriage. But I'm telling you that the sources of the church lies on the shoulder of the sources of the family. If our families are correct, wake that mommy sleeping beside you, atmosphere. Wake that sister beside you, wake that brother, atmosphere, so that you don't start sleeping. You need to hear this. We need to know that the church is made up of homes. Is there any alien in our midst this morning? Like you fell down from the sky and you just found your way into the church. Even aliens, they have a family. Am I right? They belong to a family. Hey, they have their names. You hear different type of aliens. Hey, hey. So, how much more we that we are not A and Lien? We are humans. We are made by God. We come from a family. We come from a home. If your home front is not correct, it will affect the church. If maybe the responsibility that the husband is supposed to be taking. He's not taking it. And the Lord is on the wife. It will affect the church if it's the wife that is coming to the church. Hallelujah. Yeah. And if your children are not well trained. And they are coming to the church. It will also affect the church. Maybe they are in one department or the other. Is it that they are giving a day to their HOD. Or they are just doing one thing or the other. But when God helps us. And we are able to put our houses in order. Our homes in order. The church will be a blessed place. It will be a place where we achieve more results. When our homes are correct, the wife will say, I'm going to church. The husband will not say, why? You don't know more than church, 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 church. The wife will be able to contribute. The husband will be able to contribute. The children will contribute. We are going for evangelism. Even if all the members of the family cannot be there, there is a representative. I speak to one. You speak to another. Another speaks to another from that. What's happening to the work of God? It's moving. But imagine out of five families, only two families are fully in. We can't move fast. So your home needs to be correct in order for the church to move. Tell your neighbor, my home shall be correct. I will advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Marriage is the bedrock of the church. Marriage is the bedrock of the church. 
because marriage and the church are inseparable the state of one automatically affects the other healthy marriages means healthy homes and healthy homes make for a healthy church if your marriage is healthy your home will be healthy and once your home is healthy the church will be healthy will be healthy if your marriage is unhealthy your home will also be unhealthy and then what would happen you will want to transmit that same thing amen there are places where there's so much division so much strife hatred in the house of god why the people it's the people we are the church not the walls not the drum sets not the keyboard you and i we are the church so if we don't have a correct life we'll bring the same attitude into the church maybe in my house we are used to daddy will sit down children will sit down ah did you see Yalagbaja? your children too will contribute ah hmm. i greeted her this morning she never answered me and the mommy or the daddy will say don't greet her again what are you greeting her for is she feeding you mm -hmm. and then the children say hey now and my mommy say i should not greet her again my daddy say i should not greet her and then in the church someone should mistakenly step on their toe what you've told them about mommy caroline what would happen they will practice it and then you see little little children that they will see a darling ones they won't be able to to greet and then the next thing you would hear is that why did you stop greeting the person offended me now offended me and uh, i just felt that i should know uh -uh. who is teaching us who is the source it's not from god those thoughts are not from god at all they are not when our homes are healthy we will give birth and give rise to an healthy church and healthy church will be built so to get the church to a proper place marriages must be put into the proper shape we can no longer shy from these facts the church can no longer shy from this fact and that is why we are bringing all of these teachings our ways we should not say that marriage does not cost your marriage is not for you alone don't say it's my home i can do what i want no no longer can you do what you want whatever happens in your home affects the community whatever happens in your home affects the church of god so there is a need for you to rise and do the proper things don't let's stop living recklessly let's stop it know that it is beyond the family of four there are generations there is a community there is a church that is attached to the healthiness of your marriage so no longer shall husband say eh, because you did not listen to my instructions you keep quiet you stop talking to your wives and then you start making them worried like a just always told us now that i wanted to think about his life the life that two has become one for that they are supposed to think together he decided to think alone thereby giving worries to his wife do you think she can pray and she'll be happy do you think she can approach the presence of God with a very free heart? No. And when the woman saw that, what can I do? How can I go about this? She called his spiritual father. Who can you call when your partner is doing the wrong thing? Who does your partner listen to? What does your partner listen to? Are they a defined piece or things that are not a defined? What is the collection of songs? on your partner's phone in your heart in the heart of your partner there are some of us that don't have those songs on our phone but those songs reside in our hearts women arise and pray for your husbands the best form of healing is when you pray for your enemy and that's why jesus said you should pray for your so when they offend you instead of complaining instead of allowing sorrow to overwhelm you and then you start doing things you ought not to do pray channel that attitude into jesus said father forgive them for they know not what they do you also tell the father to forgive your husband for he know not what and then watch if god would not change his heart husbands do likewise pray for your wives I mean, no, let's be sincere we're in the house of god we're in the school of the spirit how many of you pray for your wife often 
lift up your hands and wave it to Jesus. I pray for my wife often. Hallelujah. God bless you. God will grace you to do more. How many of you wives pray for your husband? Not just when you come to church and we are leading prayer for your husbands. On your own, you pray for your husband. Wave your hands to Jesus. Amen. May the Lord help you in Jesus' name. Married and unmarried, pray for your spouse. Create the home that you want. Create the marriage you want. It's in your hands. Don't just sit down and be doing, I'm not attracted to him, Jare. You are not attracted to this one. You are not attracted to that one. You are not. What kind of attraction are you looking for? What are you doing about it? Are you just waiting? You just want to see him physically. He's all that can answer him. And then you know that, yes, he's the one for me. What about the content in his life? Is it correct? Is the thought that can answer reflecting the real person gun, 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 behind the statue and the, and the everything? God is helping us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The church should not underestimate the importance of marriage because Christ is coming for a church without spots or wrinkles. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27. God is coming for a church and the church is you. How beautiful it will be. You know, this might sound funny, but it's, it's, it's inspired so much in my heart. Was it yesterday on Dove TV? They were doing um, Bible stories. So they they used the cartoon characters to demonstrate the Bible story. So they were they, the cartoon was on the birth of Jesus Christ. The old story of Mary and Joseph. That was what the cartoon was about. So they were using cartoon characters to show it. And then it got to the point where, and it was so real. Because among the cartoon characters, there were three. There was one that actually didn't believe that God will make provision for the Savior. And there were some that believed also. And that was telling others that. You, yeah, but you, it's God that said Mary will be pregnant. Look at who. Oh, they said everybody should go to their hometown. And when they got to the gate of the hometown, they were turning some people back. There's no space. Go. If you're not from here, go to your hometown. Go to your hometown. And Mary was already due. And that was like, they won't allow us to pass. I want to see if that God will come true. That God came true. They went to different inns. And there's someone that needs to stay. No room. No room. No room. And the person was saying again that, ah, ah. but you said, is this God? How come he didn't make provision for any room? And then someone offered them a manger. Uh, and the boy and the character was like, how can you give birth to the savior in a manger? Savior of the world. You know, these are the things people are saying about your homes and your convictions. That they are saying about you. You said God told you to marry him. You said your home is clinical. Look at her. Uh, uh, can any good thing come out from you? Nazareth. That it is now left to you to either allow what they said to become a reality or to allow the opposite to happen. And then going further, the most beautiful part of it was when, when the, the angels came to announce to the shepherds. And then they started singing. And you know, oh, so, so beautiful. And I had, I, I just, it just registered in my heart that heaven is indeed beautiful. I was seeing it in a cartoon form. And then I just tried to see beyond the cartoon, like how heaven would look like. You know, the voices, the melody, everything. And I just picked up my phone. I just wrote on my status that heaven is beautiful. Indeed, it is beautiful. It is. So you can make your home beautiful. That's the point. Heaven is beautiful. So God is coming for a church without wrinkle, without blemish, without spots. You know, a lot of us, especially females, we are always conscious of our appearance. And then we find ourselves asking people, do I look dark? Am I looking lighter or fairer? Any in grammar, whatever you want to use, you get my point. Ah, hey, look at, ah, sports. I don't even know. What will I use? And we can spend so much trying to look for the solution. Our face should be so, so spotless, aceless, no pimples, and everything. We spend so much to just get that. Now, let's now imagine how much Christ had to pay 
because he wants you and I. He wants our homes to be without spots and without wrinkles, without blemish. Now, let's ask ourselves as we are seated, are we allowing the sacrifice of Jesus to be worth it? The price that Jesus paid on that cross, is your family appreciating that price? Are you praying together? Are you dwelling in unity? Are you dwelling in oneness of purpose? Or are you a stumbling block to your spouse? Your spouse is trying to ascend and you are descending. There is no oneness. Your spouse is trying to pray, listen to God's word. And then you, on Sunday and during the time you come to church, you ascend. And the moment you are at home, in the midst of other companies, you descend. And then you are expecting that you should move with speed. Can two work together except they agree? So let's look at our lives. Maybe the reason we don't have speed is because we are not yet in oneness in our homes. Maybe we should have moved faster and farther than we are today. If only we can live in oneness. Christ is coming for a church without spots. A church without blemish. A, a church without wrinkles. If the church must grow to maturity before Christ comes, then marriages must be strengthened. How strong the church is will be affected by how strong our homes are. So the strength of the church will be affected by the strength of your marriage. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, I receive grace to build a strong home. Amen. When our homes are strong, then the church will be strong. Why is the marriage, why is our marriage relevant to the church? Another thing we need to understand, the first one I said, marriage is the bedrock of the church. Another is that humanity was dethroned. Humanity was dethroned. Through the home, the devil dethroned humanity. Do we agree? The story of Adam and Eve. <laughs> that was the picture of the home. That was the picture of the home. And then what happened? The devil came because there was no hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. See, don't just tell someone, don't do this. Let them understand why they should not do it. Ensure you are on the same page. The reason why we find our children going back to do the same thing you corrected them. Our children are not good, so they are not. They are not. Is our approach. The reason they keep going back to that same thing you ask them not to do is because you are only, how will I put this now? You are, they, they feel that you are making it mandatory. They don't understand the process, the why. Oh, you don't touch that thing. Why? Shouldn't that child touch it? You are telling your wife, don't touch that money. What is the money meant for? Amen. So that she will not feel as if you have the money and you don't want to give her. Okay, you are not able to buy certain things at a time. Why? Don't just feel that your wife should assume. You, you just assume that your wife will know. Which is supposed to understand I don't have money. How will she know? Is she in your heart? She's not. You have to talk. Tell your neighbor, talk. Talk. Let her know your weights. We have talked about finance. Let them know how much you weigh. Know that you have. You're not saying, the moment I let her know that I have. Now, that's when she will start bringing plenty bills. And I'll start paying. I'll start paying. There's a place of balance. Women learn wisdom too. And then you start doing her. Uh, 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 oh, I'll just tell her I don't have jarry. And then you want to buy something which maybe that's why you are saving your money because you know that thing will be useful. Maybe you want to buy a car now and you are because you don't like the way your wife is stressing. You don't like it in your heart. You are thinking about it in your heart. But the person you are thinking for does not know. How do you expect to be on the same page? You want to buy a car so that both of you will ride it together and she will stop stressing to enter bike and all that with your children. But you didn't tell her. She will feel you are wicked. She will feel you are stingy. She will feel you are selfish. And then you start creating bala for yourself when you could have just talked about it. Let her know, okay, for now, these are, these are the things that I'm doing. Amen. 
please let us talk please when you have talk do what you ought to do and when it is plenty too in the opposite let your family members don't go and put yourself into debt when you could have talked about it don't put yourself into debt Ah, I don't want them to know that. Can you go? And you start, you start borrowing from here, yeah, borrowing from there, and then you are in so much mess. You can't sleep at night. You are so heavy hearted. You are not happy at home. You are not cheerful at home. And then your wife starts wondering, did I offend this man? Women are emotional beings. So they are always looking for 101 reasons out of something that is very minute. So even if you are going to some, let, let them know, please, that is, let, them, let, let us know. Thank you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us know to avoid a whole lot of issues and assumptions. Talk about it. Talk about it. The serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Therefore, the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden. That's Genesis 3 verse 23, the story of the fall of man and everything when things fall apart when things fell apart in the home man was driven out of the garden you know we said something that marriage in the original intent of god was meant to be like a garden a garden of treasures so what happened that we are seeing all of these things we are seeing at play was because man fell and was driven out of that garden so in order to enjoy the treasures of that garden there is a need for man to arise and come back in so until we are grafted in again by the blood by the word by the spirit of god we would not enjoy the treasures we won't so there is a need for us to be grafted in again man was the throne so for man to be re-entroned to enjoy those benefits the home must be what god has ordained it to be amen your home must be patterned after god and the word of god so if there will be restoration to humanity it has to come through the home it has to come through the home where we raise our children not to be touts where we raise our children not to go to school and be cultists we give unto them the right values we teach them the right things we are not too busy we are not chasing after shadows leaving the real one behind and then in the future it becomes a problem unto us don't let let's stop chasing shadows chase the real substance and the real substance is what the word of god has instructed you to do number three reason and then we draw the curtain there why the church is really why marriage is relevant to the church is that effectual prayer requires the home being in order first peter chapter 3 verse 7 effectual prayer effectual prayer after the institution of marriage the bible made us to understand in genesis that what god will come in the cool of the evening he will come to fellowship with man god is interested god wants to fellowship with you first peter 3 verse 7 likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not amen likewise the husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heads together of the grace of life that your prayers be not in them your own must be a successful one for your prayers not to be in that are you a prayer warrior how is your home every prayer meeting you are there every mountain you know every prayer gathering you know and you keep praying you are looking old you keep praying with many wrinkles on your face and then people are thinking you are fasted and fasted and fasted now god is saying check your home could that be the reason why it looks as if your prayer is not answering one shall chase and two shall shall what send ten thousands to flight now you are not chasing them you won't even see them the way they would run because you are united so stop praying alone stop doing the prayer warrior alone stop being the prayer warrior alone do you know when we are in oneness when we are in unity we pray and get results faster than when one person is praying so if you are a couple in the house this morning and you feel that you can pray alone 
you just enjoy yourself and you have long list of prayers bring your wives into it wives bring your husbands into it agree together and pray then you see your results faster don't feel that I, i'll just let me just do my own no she should come to church she's not coming so you now leave her oh, no, i'll just be praying i'll just be praying just, how many can your prayer do one shall chase hmm. are you a prayer warrior how is your home if your home is not in order don't bother yourself praying because such prayers shall be hindered amen god does not answer prayers when they are hindered though Hey, so it is important that you put your house in order so that you can enjoy the efficiency and effectiveness of prayer there were instances of men in the bible whose homes were not in order king solomon amen amen, amen. amen. king solomon first king 11 if you read through from verse 1 it says but king solomon loved many strange women of the nations concerning which the lord said unto the children of israel ye shall not go in to them neither shall they come in unto you for surely they will turn your heart after their i don't know even i don't know but i think myself and so we're talking and we're talking and we just said if a believer should marry a non-believer it's two things so the stronger one will win the weaker one do we get it it's the battle of the strongest so if the believer is the strongest the believer will be able to win the unbeliever but if the unbeliever is the strongest you will just notice that <laughs> the fire is just going down 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 and they will always justify it am i lying they will always justify it you yeah I, I just have to do everything i can and you start finding yourself doing things you don't even believe in things contrary to your belief things contrary to what you know as the word of god and you start bending the standard of god and you expect to have the god kind of results check again check again the god kind of result can only be got in the god kind of way solomon lost his throne in verse 11 god was angry with solomon and his kingdom was what was rented god rented the kingdom from him and gave it to his servants because his home was not in order maybe those contracts you have been losing is because your home is not in order or you are not honoring your wife or you are not honoring your husband maybe you should have risen higher than you are now but because you are not honoring your spouse that you have been joined together with witnesses maybe that's why those things are dragging back check is your home in order amen amen amen, amen. 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 you know it was amazing when i heard someone use the example of ananias and sapphira i think i shared with them on sunday because it was so shocking to me when the person used the example of ananias and sapphira to 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 demonstrate unity in marriage amen how many of us are familiar with the story of Ananias and Sapphira? That should be Acts chapter 5. Where everybody, during the time of the apostles, they were selling their, their things. Just so that the church, can you see that the church and the home, they are together. They were selling their things. Wake that mommy sleeping, wake that daddy sleeping, receive strength in Jesus name. They were selling their things. They were bringing it together for the advancement of the kingdom. And one family decided that see don't let us give them every time church will be saying we should bring money we should bring money we should bring money uh-uh they don't even know more than money those are supposed to zero. just sit down they are not working oh they're not doing anything they'll sit down one place i'm saying they don't even know how it feels like in the world out there they don't know how we'll go out from 6 a.m and then we are coming back at night with muzzle pain and everything in our body and then somebody will just say bring your tithe bring your offering bring your money and then they decided not to bring everything that let's just say okay we sold this thing hundred thousand we say we sold it for maybe let's just say 45 we will keep the minimum we also need money now it's our property and then the husband came first and he was asked he said ah that's the amount and what happened he died on the spot instant judgments 
And the wife came again. She was asked, ah, this property, oh, are you sure that this was, she should have risen if she was a woman of wisdom. That why is this question being asked? I told my husband already, okay, why are they asking me if I'm sure that is the amount we sold this thing? And she should have retraced that step. But because she was trying to keep her home, like we would justify when we are doing wrong things that are not according to the standard of God. Forgetting that it is God Himself that initiated our institution. And then she said, Ah, is, uh, is that's it? That's the amount. And she was so that the foot of those that carried your husband. So what happened? She joined him. And both of them will end where they chose to. So hand up themselves. Don't partner with your spouse when they are doing things that are wrong. The scripture says, children, obey your parents in, in, that is in accordance to the standard and the principle of God. If what they are telling you is contrary, no. You know God does not want you to involve in rituals. And then your parents is telling you that can't you be like all that children and make it easy. And you obey them. Who will bear the consequence? Say also in marriage, don't be the wife that will partner with your husband to do wrong. Don't partner with him to sit down at home when he ought to be in the presence of God. Don't partner with him to be coming late to the presence of God. Don't partner with your husband to stop praying. Don't partner with your husband to stop fellowshipping with God. Don't fight with him to correct him. Do it on your knees. Go to God in prayer. And if you have someone you can listen to, go to such people and talk to them about it. Let them talk to him. Lift him up in prayers. The scripture says that iron sharpeneth. If one is weak, ha uh ha, -huh, the other should be strong enough. Not that both of you should be weak at the same time. Get strength. Get strength. Get strength. The church. Is important your marriage is important to the church in the agenda of God you see these two institutions they have so much to do shall we rise up on our feet this morning there are so many examples so many marriages in the Bible that advanced the kingdom of God and there are some also that did not advance the agenda of God which side do you want your marriage to be on that's marriage that will advance the kingdom of god or that marriage that will propagate the kingdom of hell choose where you want your home to be shall we lift up our hands and bless the lord this morning let us bless the name of the lord this morning let's bless the name of the lord let's bless the name of the lord just as your marriage is important to you to your children's future it is also important to god it's important to the body of christ that you get it right in marriage can you lift up your hands this morning and thank god for the light of his word that he has shown upon our hearts this morning bless his name bless his name bless his name give him all the glory lord we thank you thank you for our homes have been changed thank you for we begin to walk according to your standard according to your pattern according to your order for we are the generation of those that bring order that bring justice for we are the generation of those that set things right according to your pattern and your precept lord we give you praise lord we give you praise for in Jesus name we pray you are here this morning you know that the word of God has found you and has searched you out you know that your home is not according to the way God will have it be can you go ahead and talk to God this morning Lord break my home break my marriage in accordance in order in the pattern of your kingdom can you go ahead and speak to the Lord that mercy we correct every wrong that mercy will correct and will bring to right everything that you have done wrongly are you talking to the yes of god this morning lord we ask that you bring our homes to order we ask oh god that you help us to live according to your pattern according to your intent that our homes oh god will speak of you in the name of jesus oh god show us your mercy oh god show us your mercy show us your mercy oh god in every area so oh god that the disorder in our homes has hindered us from moving 
faster. Lord, show us your mercy. Show us your mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you are here and your wife is here or your husband is here, can you just join your hands together with your wife in agreement? Agree with your wife. Agree with your husband. If you are a single trusting God for marital settlement, can you lift up your right hand even as we pray together? If you are here with your husband, with your wife, please join your hands together and pray in agreement. We are going to be decreeing light this morning. We are going to decree light upon our homes. Decree light upon your marriage. Every form of darkness, me is strife, be it division. Whatever the darkness might be, once light appears, darkness has to disappear. So go ahead and speak light into your life. Speak light into your family. Speak light into your home. If you are a child, you are a teenager. Go ahead and speak light into the home of your parents. Because once your parents' marriage is solid, then your future is standard. Your future is secure. Go ahead and speak peace. Go ahead and speak light. Go ahead and speak the intent that the kingdom of God will come upon your parents' home. That the kingdom of God will come upon their marriage. That the kingdom of God will come that his will will be done over our homes, over our families. That the will of God will be done. Are you praying at all? That the will of the Lord be done. That his kingdom come. No longer shall we be ignorant of the things to do. No longer shall we be ignorant. In the house of Balakanda, no longer lord no longer shall the devil hold us captive this morning we are free we are delivered in the name of jesus the veils are taken off our eyes the veils are taken off our eyes is somebody praying at all lift up your voice and pray lift up your voice and pray to the hearings of the lord the father i receive grace i am lighted up my home is lighted up my marriage is lighted up In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. May the Lord answer our prayers in Jesus' name. In 30 seconds, can you just stretch forth your hand to Mama and say, Father, every virtue that has gone out of your daughter, we ask that you replenish in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Father, we ask this morning for your daughter. Every virtue that has gone out of her, you replenish in the name of Jesus. We pray for the family in the name of Jesus. It will be that which you have ordained for a time such as this in the name of Jesus. Lord, to transform lives and marriages in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for grace, fresh grace and fire. Lord, freshness of grace, wisdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to believe you are blessed this morning. By the grace of God, we want to have a question and answer section. And I want to believe in the first service on Thursday, the first service, the second service, and the third service this morning. Maybe you have one or two questions in your heart that you want to ask. So that we can do justice to that as the Lord will give us a counsel. I pray the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So by the grace of God, I'll be anchoring this session. You have question in your heart. Maybe you can't come. Can we just pass the basket? If you can answer the question, you can rise to your feet and ask the question rather. Whether from the first service, the second service, or the third service, or from the teachings on Thursday, you can write out the question and pass it to the front. Or if you want to stand up, you can rise to your feet and ask the questions. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Is there anybody with questions in the house? From what we heard on Thursday, the first service this morning, the second service. Any question in the house? Money matters in marriage, relevance of marriage to the church, and what you need to see in your partner before you embark on that journey. Is there any question in the house? There's a question going on. Okay, Baba. Ba there's a question going on in your heart why the first service was going on in the morning please just write down the question why we're talking on money matters in marriage i know a lot of us have questions please can you just write it out and let's look at five questions together the lord bless us in jesus name so baba you can open the floor sir 
the essence of this question and answer is to learn one or two things so please pay attention praise the lord hallelujah and my question is this is it uh, advisable for a couple to have a uh, separate rooms for the wife to have her own room and the husband in marriage that's a very good one clap for baba very well that's a very powerful question anybody wants to answer mama is that <laughs> well marco you have an answer if you have an answer please let's talk then i can by the spirit of god what god is doing in my spirit please give microphone to marco i hope you get the question right yes sir. is it good for the husband and the wife to keep a separate room in marriage praise the lord hallelujah for me you no, know, and then as a christian the bible says what god has joined together let no man put us under there's nothing that should put us under that should separate us so as a christian you have to live in one room on on same bed if you there's, there's no way the misunderstanding will not come but if you are in one room it is easy for you to settle it without calling the third party so i advise not even if you have four bedroom flats we should maintain one room. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Any other contribution? Any other one? Praise the Lord. Uh, like what mommy have said, there are two ways to eat. You understand? In marriage, you can have your separate room as a man, as a woman. But by the grace of God, you can also keep a room. The essence of this, why I'm saying this is this, as a man, or as a woman maybe you have some time you want to do maybe you want to study you want to read especially for those in career but i heard a story recently a man died recently that was about two weeks or three weeks ago so i think the man died around five something maybe 5 40 something a.m because why do we know that we knew because they said he put a call through to the wife doing the same house but he, I think he went to pee and by the time he came back, we don't know what happened. He fell. Because by the time they saw the dead, the, his, his corpse, he, was, he fell by the, door, uh, by the bedside. You understand? So if the two of them are together, maybe he will have been able to survive what happened. But aside that, it's whatever you just choose to. There's nothing wrong since it's in the same house. And separation does not mean that two of us are fighting. Are you getting me? So I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. It's all about your discretion if you want it. But like what I have said, it's a point, it's a part of it. So that when there is quarrel, two of you cannot sleep you know, on the same bed. It is easy for you to actually resolve your differences. Are we together? I do visit Open Heaven very well to pray. Open Heaven in the camp, which is uh, which happens to be our Father in the Lord first house on redemption camp. And if you are taking, if you have been taken through the tour in the house, you have a daddy's room, you understand. You have mommy's room and even in daddy's room you have prayer room that is a small cot that is the prayer room but they both have their separate rooms do you understand you understand are we together so it all depends but ma i'll just suggest my own opinion you understand it is good to stay together you understand but if i want to spend time alone then i can go to other room maybe for study then you come back to your room the lord will help us in jesus name any other question baba has that answer have we answered your questions any other question we know we have a lot of questions on money matters please ask your questions praise god hallelujah hallelujah Amen. all right by the grace of god i want to first of all appreciate all our speakers from the first service even down from on thursday down to the day god bless you mightily master in the name Amen. of jesus Amen. all right my question is this though it's not like a question but i would still like the marco to throw more light on it i was going through i was flipping through my social media page recently i, I saw a video of a minister of god so they now ask him a question like how do we bring balance you know most times men tend to be very busy there are some men that have ministry so the man we like i have a ministry i have a wife i have obligation to people I have a vocation to the body of Christ. I have everything like this. So I want it to be expressed that how do those how should that particular person bring balance to it? There are some men that they might not have ministry, but they have careers. 
like okay let's say for example a man like Dangote for example we have other men like Microsoft or those big men that at a particular time they tend to rise in whatsoever aspect of area of life that they are they have obligations to their business they have obligations to everything so how do they bring balance the same thing with a man and also with a woman so how should they bring in balance to this thing praise the lord i want to believe we understand what he's trying to ask anybody who wants to attempt the question mommy marco please can you can you help us man I come and give it to Mama. <laughs> they are Marco people. Yes. The spirit of cancer. Hallelujah. Amen. God is helping us in Jesus. Amen. Um, like, okay. I will still refer back to Apostle's teaching on order. There is an order. And our God is a God of order. So, whatever event is happening around our lives should be according to the order. And what's the order? Family first. So, regardless, whether ministry, whether career, whatever it is, it comes after your family. So, one should not take the place of another. When you are supposed to be spending time with your family, don't spend so much energy on your career. Because the truth of the matter is that um, one sustains father than the other. One sustains father than the other. When you need a shoulder to lean on, your career cannot be that shoulder. When when you need someone to bear you up, you to encourage you, your your <laughs> like someone in the ministry now, you can't come to church members and start telling them everything, and they will be that shoulder. That's if they are even available for you to tell them those those stories. Do you understand now? But there is always a home to go back to. There is always a family to come back to. So that is why we should build a strong bond with our family in such a way that when the, the storms of life would arise, you will have some people to journey along with you. And then you realize that those people that give priority to other things aside their family, there is always lapses and loopholes. And those homes, there will be a crack. And at the end of the day, it might fall apart. So may God give us wisdom to build our homes in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, in addition to what Mama has said, you must pay attention to your family. And I will tell you why. The mighty man you are seeing there, who is the head of a conglomerate, a business, can be down. Are you getting me? At a point that is down, the only person you will see is the family. I've seen great people sick. I've seen mighty men down. At that point of their downness, at that time of their loneliness, the only one you will see is their, fa is their family. Are we together? So, we are told, even in the Bible, the family comes what? First. You know when Bible is talking about, in, I think in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Is it 1 Timothy chapter 3 when Bible is talking about he that will be a bishop? You understand? It's just talking about being an overseer. So, the first thing the Bible mentioned first, it will be a, a husband of one wife and the one that rules over his family so meaning that in every endeavor you find yourself what comes first is your family are you getting me your your, your staff in your in your place so they don't love you whether as a director they don't love you they are only there to work for you take their salary and they even gossip you behind and they take their money and they go whether in multinationals or anywhere but your family remains your family your wife remains your wife your children remains your children so the family should come first in whatever you are doing. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Nobody takes care of family like family. Yeah. Have we answered the question, sir? Any other question? Question on money matters. I'm very, very interested in that. Okay, Baba. Okay, problem. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> all right. Let me just ask these two last questions. First of all, <laughs> I want you to be. I want the Marco to say something on. Is it good? For a sister to be living with a man that has not paid this the necessary obligations because i have i've seen so many things recently in my house in different different places that in fact me i'm not asking is it that and they are they are ministers in the church yeah they are not fact, born again forget it <laughs> <laughs> that's cohabitation they are not born again <laughs> so they are ministers 
Praise God, because Hallelujah. even our young ones that are here, yeah. it will still be very well okay for them to really know it's not good though, it's cause and all those ones. So I would like it to be expressed. And lastly, is talk about finance. Yeah. Finance. I want to ask. I've seen a situation whereby a wife was telling the husband that you are going to build my house for me, and they already have a house. So me, I don't understand that building. Is he build? You want them to be okay? Possibly. Why? You say my family. I want my family to probably stay in my own property and all those ones. So the husband will say, okay, no, there is no need for you, me to build a house for you. At least this one that we have is okay. But they are forgotten. They are forgetting that at early time in marriage, you have already told your wife that there is no place for people to come in, to come and stay with us. Those so how should they go about that in order not to bring conflict praise the lord i think on the first question i will answer mama you you help me on the second one although on the on the first one that one is out you understand there is no point yeah it's a child of god how will you be how, how will you be staying with a sister that you're not married to see let me even tell you even even as a married man you understand keeping maybe housemate that are female or stuff it takes grace and discipline not to talk of somebody you are now living with that you are not married you when you are when you are born again the holy spirit is there to correct you to, but no holy spirit without tell you to go and stay with that sister Ava, where your body is not a stone also you understand you will commit again and again as a matter of fact he's not is an unbeliever we saw it when we were in university in those days. We saw them living together. You understand what I'm saying? They are married even before they are married. You understand? They are married even before they are what? They are married. Uh, okay, they are finished. You see, lovers. Wow. So we call it cohabitation. It's not allowed. Are we together? It's not allowed. Well, don't forget when we were talking about types of courtship then. We talk about carry over courtship that you must not continue. You were not born again when you met the sister and you were doing all those your uh, all those uh, side uh, how do you call it the side wall all those side wall plays and all of stuff but when you are not born again you should disengage in that relationship except you have now prayed that god now said okay you can go on we call it carry over relationship you should not continue with that the lord will help us in jesus name on the second one maybe before i hand over to mama uh, the second question is that how we are living in the house before and it's our own you are not asking me to build your own for you did you want to leave the one we are living in and not to go and stay alone that's the question you ask that's number one number two if they have the resources if the reason why the us the wife is asking they have the money and the husband promise oh let me build a house for you it could be for commercial purpose that that money will be coming to the wife as a source of income there's nothing wrong in that they have the resources but not the one that they are still struggling and you are lucky the other that you was built me my old house you understand that's just a waste of time mama you have any question hallelujah amen okay then um i think another factor to it why i feel a woman can demand for such a thing it could be because of a present age of in-laws and their interference in marriage you know we've heard stories of when a man dies and then the family will come and take everything the man had leaving the uh, wife and children with nothing so that could be the reason such woman is demanding now here is the balance the bible says that therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife so when you are living and you are cleaving to your wife or to your husband it means that no mother no father no brother no sister and then there is a need to keep emphasizing on that let them understand that your home comprises of you your wife and your children and whatever you own belongs to your wife and your children hallelujah Amen. don't give them that that entitlement mentality that after all is our brother after all is our son after all is our uncle so we can do whatever we remember that your wife also is a daughter of somebody 
and yet she left everything to cleave unto you so the best gift you can do is to ensure that the place of your wife and your children is well understood by your family members don't allow them have so much access to your house that they'll start dictating how things should go so let in-laws for um future in-laws know your place amen yes know your place receive wisdom to know your place so that you don't meddle too much in the affairs of husband and wife yes for those that that are educated exposed you have your lawyer you have your will written down write your will down and don't punish your your wife or your spouse that and eh, everything you have been doing to me you store it up and you keep waiting that it is after my will is being read you now portion nothing to that person that's wickedness that's not fair you know because all the years of that woman whether she was bad or she was good she lived it with you so try to appreciate that have a good heart you know god says you love unconditionally so love unconditionally god is helping us in jesus name man mama thanks so much for that contribution man. papa your question will be answered right okay papa money matters in marriage praise the lord hallelujah i have two questions okay sir the first question uh, money matters now i want to hear that one okay money. how do we balance this if we have a uh, maybe a husband that is a waster for example this woman she's hard working and she has been getting money so maybe gives my money twice on different occasion now, okay let's build our house take this money let's go and get land and build our house the man squandered the money the second time again you might give the man uh, money to get bus that okay let us get a bus transportation business that money will be coming in the man squandered the money my question is this now now this man this woman now decided to save money secretly and she got a land and built a house hmm? now and i came to demand that i built a house so i did not tell you because i know i should tell you you start to bring the money and in uh, two occasions you've squandered the money so the request is that should the man pack to that house now the man the woman did not tell the man where, why she was building the house now after she finished building the house she now told the man and the man said over my dead body how will you build the house and you did not tell me and you want me to park in into that house now because i should the man pack to that house or the man the one is at fault that is it now my second question is this uh, my second question is this there's a couple you understand and this uh, lady is working in a company and the protocol of that company is that the first three years you join them, you will not be pregnant. You understand? We don't allow that for the first three years. And this uh, husband, is okay. Ah, now that we have gotten married, ah, let's have our children on time. And this lady did not tell the man. She went ahead and be using pills to prevent uh, pregnancy. First year, second. Ah, these people be going for one month to another prayer and all that. And this lady knows that ah, she has been using pills to prevent you understand the pregnancy ah she didn't tell the husband so about uh, maybe after four years or five years after the company protocol you know Sasha, but they couldn't the lady couldn't get pregnant again and she now opened up to the husband maybe after five or six years so the this thing now should demand the man now said ah so you are doing that i'll be doing this i have we we'll taking you from one place to another medical district report month uh, month to year now she now called family like the man called family meeting that okay now that this woman has done this i'm going to take a second wife now the family is asked okay should the man take a second wife because the woman could not get pregnant again according to medical reports and even some pastors even say ah, even god or less <laughs> your message has even elapsed but now the man is intended to take a second wife you as a friend or a family member do you advise the man to take a second wife because he needs children i think you understand the two questions please the the first question please give it to daddy jacobs i think he has something to say that the first question daddy please come up sir praise master jesus hallelujah ah uh, i want to attend to the first question uh, 
I want to believe that the man know the source of the income of the wife. I want to believe that. The man know the source of income of the woman. And uh, that is why he can collect the first money that is meant for building. He will spend it. Collect the second uh, money given to her for boss again. He spend it. Now, if the wife uh, went behind to save money on her own, put a building in place, then tell the man, I have build, put a building in place. Let us pack in. To me, it should be a learning point of the mistake the man has made by spending those money before. For him to take a decision, willingly pack to that house and take a correction from that point. So for me, I will enter and I see it as a point of correction because I understand and I know her means of income. If you don't understand, if you don't know the means of income of your wife and she will just bring money to go and build the house, I don't think you will collect it. She will go again, bring money, let us buy a bus and you don't know the means, I don't think you will collect it. So you must have an idea of the means of her income and because of that, even though she go behind, build the house, let us pack in and, uh, and uh, make a correction from that point. Thank you. Wow. Praise the Lord. Can we just clap for, to, for God and clap for Daddy? In fact, that was a very great wisdom in what he said. The first thing you need to understand the source of income of that wife. If the source of income is genuine, there's nothing stops the man. It's a point for that man to be corrected. That Baba, you have goofed. Baba, you have misbehaved. You understand? Honestly, with in all humility, the man should even apologize to the wife. Are we together? But mind you, in marriage, we said something during that second service. It's not from whom the money is coming. It is the need of the family. If the need of that family at that point is shelter, you need a home. And somebody in the family has the money. Are we together? There is nothing wrong in building a house. Are we together? It's not from whom the money is coming. But the need that they have at the point in time. So don't stop the man from moving in. Are we together? But the pride, the ego of a man, are we together? Say, ah, I will not go there. But it's pride. The man will just waste outside there. But the truth of the matter is that the woman has actually done well. Because if you give that man the same money the third time, he will waste it. But since he has a genuine source of income, the decision of that woman is right. But why she is taking that decision too? He can carry along. Are we together? Murder the children so that we have witnesses. Why am I doing this thing? I put together. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Daddy, there is so great wisdom what you have said this morning. I'm very happy. We have learned one or two things from you. The Lord bless you, sir. Any other question? What's the second question? <laughs> Please give it to Pastor Isaiah. Okay, it's question that you are. I thought she wanted to answer the second question. Baba, please answer the second question. Do we remember the second question? Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, concerning the second question, I want to quickly mention something. Um, he said the wife didn't tell the husband, and then she went ahead using contraceptive and all that, which affected her womb by the long run. The first question is what kind of couple are they? You know, we have been mentioning something. Do something the way God will have you do it. And that's what God is correcting, the narrative. So, what kind of Christians are they? Are they truly believers? A child of God, who the Holy Spirit is directing the affairs of his or her life, would not do that. Yes, ma'am. And another thing is that we would always say, talk about everything in courtship. Don't hide anything. Okay, it's your career talk about it agree if your spouse does not agree on something then forfeit it forfeit it 
Except it's a need like we've seen in the first question and you just have to do it. But this that matters to life and heritage. No, it should not be done. So that's the first thing. What kind of couple are they? Who is the, um, the pillar and the anchor of their marriage? That is who they should go to for solution. If they are moving by the world standard, then the world standard will give them their solution. But if they are moving by the God standard, they go the God way. What God has joined together? Let no man put asunder. And when we are talking about unbeliever, an unbeliever is not only someone who smokes, someone who drinks, someone who does not go to church. No. An unbeliever can even be someone coming to church filled with activities, but is not ruled by the Spirit of God. So a believer is someone whose life and affairs are being ruled and dictated by the spirit of god so if the spirit of god is not the dictator of your life then you are a non-believer leave it or take it god is helping us in jesus name god is helping us to be believers in truth and indeed in jesus name so i've answered the question no yes but i i'll be that day again i've that answered that what kind of believers are they a child okay. of God are they that. children of God? If they are children of God, they go the God way. And if they are not children of God, then they already know the answer to what they want to do. Hallelujah. Amen. If they are if they are indeed children of God and such a thing has happened, if the woman is repentant and removes four of her heart, there are other means, there are other alternatives of births of childbirth now that they can actually look into medically she might not be able to like how do i explain this now like the natural way that is being known of giving birth might not be the way out at that scenario but they can always try out other means medically that have been provided by the wisdom of god they can go for adoption and any other means that medical personnel can provide for them but the option of taking a second wife is adultery <laughs> Is adultery. If, you agree if to they that, are children of God, if they are children of God, do that is our adultery. Yes, we know she was deceitful, but our God is a God of many chances, and He can always help us in Jesus' name. It can be any way. It can be the man. It can be the woman. So God will help us in Jesus' name. But you can, you will not hear us say that she marry a second wife. No, never. Praise the Lord. Daddy, I want to believe the question has been answered. Any other question because of our time? Bro, uh, Pastor Isaiah? Bro, Blessed? Any other question? Anybody? Okay, Pastor Isaiah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Before I ask my question, you know, based on what they said the other time, I've really seen a typical example of somebody who, you know, he, he sees himself as economical. You understand but at the end there is nothing economical about his life yes. you understand you know the wife always you know right now i think they started that project 2008 2009 and the woman kept pumping money to the man you know to raise their house up so i talked to you today the house is still not yet up to window level and the man is economical. amen praise god the lord will help us in the name of jesus right now they've abandoned the project because all the money they've been pumping into the house, it has not gone into the window. And the man does not have any money and he's investing the money into the land. And they are not using metal for the land. It's just normal block work. God will help us in Jesus' name. So my question here this morning is this. You know, this thing has, you know, is one of the major questions most married couples will be having in their hearts yes and then um, we know for sure that many people might not be able to say it but me i'm not married but i want to say it all right the question is why is it that you know most times most couple believe you know having separate accounts is better you have your own account i have my own account and then um, most times you know the man might believe he's doing so much and then the woman also believes that she's doing so much and most times the man wants to do certain things he just go and do those things and come back the woman also wants to go for her august meeting she goes and spend a lot there and come back the question there is if as it regards you know having separate account don't we think it's going to you know tend to bring much problem to the home in terms of the trust and transparency 
as concerning financial, the, the financial aspect of the marriage. Because most times the man might believe, I'm doing so much. But this woman, she's not doing that well. And the woman might believe, I'm doing so much. And then he belie she believes that the man is not doing so much. And the man could have done something better. So in the course of that, don't we think there's going to be a little class in that? Because you, you spoke about that in the second service teaching and i actually pick point that particular place because i tell us the truth the this thing is causing more damage so i i want to ask a question is it good for them to have joints is joint okay i believe everybody have their own discretion but do we think separate accounts might not also tend to cause problem later in the future praise the lord because of our time let me quickly attend to that question uh i remember i said it and i remember we we're told the reasons for the benefit of joint accounts but again having said that there's also a place that where we said it is not a must that they should operate joint accounts it's just two people in a the ship they need to understand themselves it's a place of understanding and openness are we together there is no point for me having money hiding it from my wife and there's no point for her hiding money from me so it depends on the two people in that ship or in that marriage. I can keep a separate account. She can keep a separate account, irrespective of what is, is coming in for her, irrespective of what is coming in for me. But when there is a need in the family, we can both come together and solve that issue. Are we together? But if we choose to have a, 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 a joint account, the essence of joint accounts is that it says it encourages openness. Are we together? and it again is a way to control the lavish spending of one either of the partners so that you, there is no point where you'll be able to pick money from the account without my knowing and i will not be able to spend money from the account without your knowing so the essence of that joint account is that one person is a, a lavish spender then we can always come in agreement locate our need once we have located our need once we notice a need then we can both agree and pick money from the joint account and solve the issue are we together that's one of the major reasons why they operate joint accounts but if they can't operate joint account they can both operate their separate account but when there's a need in the family they both bring together are we together and do and do whatever they want to do it's not a function of who is any more and who is any less it's a matter of understanding and it's a matter of what god has said wife submit to your husband husband love your wife there is no way i will not i will it's a way of proving to my wife that I love her. It's a way of, you know, service and some of the things she do. You understand? If you're hiding your money and stuff like that, you don't love. And again, if you're keeping your money away, you are not what? You are not submissive. So, it's a choice. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Have I answered the question? Have I answered the question? Mommy, you have? Okay, Stashola. Okay. We still have question. What's the time, please? At 12. Please, can you spare us five minutes, please? Stashola, ask question. Are you asking question? I'm not asking question. I just want to get whether the narrative is right from what he said. Because I know while growing up, like in my family, how it operates was that my dad does not concern whatever my mom is bringing in. They are both working. My mom is a salary earner. My dad gets contracts, gets you know things done and all that. My dad has never asked my mom how much do you earn in a month. Do you understand? Like, I don't care about your pay sleep. But the only my mom knows when they need to do things in the house. If the man has money or he doesn't have money. And she knows that when time comes around, let us put things in place. Yes, they have a mutual account whereby you know this is for the family, this is what is so I think the narrative is. The man in this first place should not put the focus on whatever is coming in for the wife. The man should put a focus on what responsibility has to be done in the house. That's just it. Man, you have heard that. And, and it's the same thing, yeah. Any other question? In this... 
um one of the questions here what should happen to a home whereby the wife is earning more money than the husband but men are superior in nature and whose money should we be spending i think this question I mean, has been answered severally even in the teaching it was answered that if you are earning more than your husband don't see it as my money in marriage it is our money don't see it as whose money are we spending what's the need that needs to be met that's what stashola has explained that's what they so they has explained submit yourself be humble it's not about the money it's the perspective and the mindset the mentality you enter into marriage with that matters god is helping us in jesus name then this one is a three-in-one question but i think it has the same roots Number one, in a situation where the husband does not want the wife to grow more than him in terms of money and career, in such case, what should the wife do? One. Number two, a pastor or a man of God, like the, uh, the husband is seen as maybe a man of God, is uh, outside, is friendly, loving, caring, but in the home is a terror, very unfriendly to the wife and children, no love. In such situation, what should the wife do? Number three, what advice should be given to a woman or wife who support the husband in all areas, but the husband does not appreciate her effort? I think all of these things has their root cause in one thing communication that's the root cause there is no effective communication in that marriage see you i don't know how best to explain this but i think there was a point where we said something that stop seeing the fault and the excesses of your spouse see their goodness some 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 husbands they they, they are not the type that, that are chitty chatty that they want to talk 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 all the time but they have their own goodness they have their own aspects where they can make up for those parts don't try to make your your partner who you want them to be understand your spouse for who they are understand and then look for a way where you both will create a balance so for this instance where you said that um the husband does not want the wife to grow in terms of money and career are you really sure he does not want you to grow or it is just your own mindset that is making it look like he does not want you to grow what are the circumstances i'm i'm i'm, I'm trying to create the balance because we are not seeing the person and we are not in the situation so it's either you are not you are not getting it right because there is no communication or the man has to work on his mentality there is no big deal if one of you a wife can hear more than the husband husband can hear more, the, more than the wife the most important thing is what do they believe what is their mindset what is their mentality how do they view life and these are things that should be talked about in courtship these are things that should be undue during courtship yeah, someone, your, your husband is friendly outside he's loving outside but when he comes to the house he's not loving what is wrong what is happening why is he loving to people outside and he's not loving to you is there something you are doing that is not right talk about it communicate is there a way you see him maybe if you should laugh too much you say see the way you take the laugh safe so you just open my get just they laugh maybe when he's among his friends he's free to fart anyhow the way he wants but when he comes to the house you start complaining i see how everywhere is just smell he said i just fart he said he would want to come be conservative around you and then you're complaining that he's not loving he's not friendly he's double-faced why is he double-faced he married you right he chose you as his wife so why are those things existing is that the way it has always been when you were in courtship if no then check what is wrong and put your home in order according to the standard of god stop looking at other homes stop comparing your partner your neighbor's partner your sister's husband your brother's wife your your relatives people might be the way they are they might be good they might be friendly to an extreme but your husband is not like that yet he's a good person see the goodness in your spouse and enjoy it and let's stop seeing the fault the more we see the fault the more we have problems but the more we see the goodness the lesser the issues we'll be having in our marriages and we have said it also and do things on your knees pray to god about everything everything the art of a king and a chief is in the heart of the lord he turns his way he wants so Go to God and pray about that habit, that attitude that you don't want. You support your husband. He's not supporting you. He's not appreciating you. Keep doing good. 
do not be weary of doing good keep doing good keep doing what you know how to do best keep doing the right things one day your rights will correct the wrongs but two wrongs can never make a right so because your husband is not appreciating you you choose to be like him you've not done well keep doing good one day your goodness will change him i said something that if it's a non-believer and a believer the stronger one will win the weaker one so if you are the good one and your goodness is stronger someday it will win him be patient it might take time but you get your results god is giving us a christian home in jesus name man shall we rise to our feet mama thank you for that answer shall we just lift up our hands and begin to appreciate god for what he has done this morning appreciate and say father we thank you thank you for teaching us your word again this morning thank you for visiting our homes father we give you all the glory we give you praise thank you because our family is being visited this morning thank you for what you have done we give you all the glory thank you jesus in jesus name we have prayed praise the lord praise the lord we want to put our notice on Monday we are having child dedication. Praise the Lord. And the first thing, Pastor Williams won't call the other play. But the time will be communicated with us. Pastor Williams. That the chronos. But the time will be communicated with us. That the willings, that the chronos, they want to see your face. Let the camera praise the Lord. That the boys is that if you want, is that the boys now? <laughs> praise the Lord. So unto who it may consign all the teenagers, men of Issachar, maid women, please wait and see your coordinator. As we do so, the Lord bless us in Jesus' precious name. We we'll pray praise the lord we have come to the end of the third service all the workers please wait all the workers please wait if you know you are a worker by the grace of god please wait so let's share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and many shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall do it after the law forever and ever amen thank you workers let's meet now